Let me get some transition music. Ah, uh, yeah. Patrick Cloud, man, talk to me, sir. It's very talk showy. <laughs> we try to switch it up a little bit. Uh, before we get to our favorite part of the uh, the the show, man, what's been going on with you, man? Let's let's talk to the people, man. I know what people know now about you, so I can talk to your your credits currently. I think, and let me know if I'm missing anything out. You're currently head of content over at All Dev Digital. You've been running that platform, doing an amazing job for the you know for the last few years, doing a lot of great things. You got roast me. You got dad jokes. You got a bunch of different. Um, content that you're going out. You got Thick Threads uh, podcast with Persephone. I believe you still got uh, um, Damn Internet You Scary with Tahir podcasting in the game. So definitely you got your own stuff, your merch, you do music. Um, so that's what you do currently. But if I left anything out, let, let them know what, you know, if I left anything off your bio for current. No, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've just been um, kind of like in a uh, a creative mind state for the last few months just That's because good. last last year was just kind of like work 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 but mm -hmm. you know you guys probably know more than anyone like when you commit to weekly things um you're always busy right yeah. and it kind of it always affects the the long-term things that you you want to do and uh well not always but that was definitely the case with me and i found myself kind of like in a uh a loop where i wasn't making anything new mm. and it lasted so long that i kind of became afraid to like st start something new you know wow. so uh and you know I, I feel like that that happens every now and then but i think that this was the longest it's ever been um and yeah i just kind of like began to like just figure out ways to get out of that and uh it's been really fun because it's like scary all over again you know um it 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 kind of it's kind of fun to suck at something right too, like in 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 a way because it's it's scarier to like start mm -hmm. and then when you're like damn i'm trash at this right kind of fun <laughs> it's cool being trash <laughs> it so, was way worse not doing it exactly you know? no that's crazy because I, I have posted something you know, similar to, you know, in the same, you know, area of what you're saying, like, you know, I had come to that, like, you know, bro, like, I had, I had a rough few years, like, you know what I'm saying? Just personally, emotionally, just, you know, with a lot going on to a point to where when I did feel like, okay, because I stopped doing content. I had just kind of stopped completely. I was just like, ah, oh, let me just kind of figure out life. But, oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> but then when I did get back to, you know, attempting to do content, I even started to question oops, my ability. Like, can I even do this on a high level? Oh, yeah, I was kind of saying that was just like, it's probably going to die. But this nigga was like, but it's a fire hazard. <laughs> I don't want to get electrocuted. <laughs> so I had a time where I just was questioning, could I even... <coughs> perform at a high level anymore did you ever deal with that like when you were starting to come back to because i know you nigga you've hit a lot of home runs so you know what i'm saying like were you when you were starting to get back into the creative bag were you starting to feel like damn is this idea as good as that one or like did you ever question yourself or your ability to create another hit in terms of uh creative directing yeah yeah just creative or just coming up with just creative stuff because that's the thing see a lot of people don't know like pat's job is just like, I don't envy what you do because a lot of people just think, oh, you know, he runs the show. Like, you know what I'm saying? He gets the people to do it. Like, like say like a show like Roast Me. Like, oh, he just gets all the people in the room and that just happens. Like, no, this nigga has to go and sit and sit with the editors over hours of footage, cutting shit out. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a really meticulous type of process. And it's something that's really hard. Like, I remember when, you know, we worked together, like, we, you would come to work and be like, man, I was up until four or five in the morning going over dailies. Like, people don't understand, like, how involved of a process that is. So what I'm mm -hmm. saying is you have had so many successes with so many big pieces of content. Like, was it ever when you were trying to come up with a new one that you started to question, will this be as good as the other things that I've created? Or was it never even like that? It was just like, I'm just going to go to the next thing. You know, actually... In terms of making a show, I feel like that's one of the things that I'm, I just know how to do. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the boring part. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, it kind of, like, I, I feel like I've just been making shows for so long. 
and now I make them for different reasons. So it's like if this if if this company is working with a brand that's food, it's like okay, I know how to execute that based on the budget level, right? Mm -hmm. But that becomes so like I I just feel like I I know how to make that type of show, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that is like the like the week to week that is it's it's fun. I still love doing it, which mm -hmm. is great. But it's like that becomes like that's not not the the the, the creative part. That's not right, the right, right. That's part. more you know of the, what I mean? the day to day functionality of and running it. I feel the same about podcasting. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as I, and this isn't to say that I don't like creative directing and po or podcasting. I love it. You know, and that's why it's it's so much fun. But in just in terms of what we're talking about, that becomes kind of like the week to week thing. Mm -hmm. Going going to a podcast with a, a solid formula. It's just you go there, you have fun, and, and then you go into the post-production, and then you go into the marketing, you know? Mm -hmm. And that le leads to the next week, and, and then that goes again. Same right. thing with running, you know, the all-deaf channel. It's like you kind of, like, work on a project, and then it goes into post, and then it goes into, you know, and then you're doing notes for the next one at the same time. So it, it's very fun, and it's very busy, but then it's, like, the other stuff that you kind of want to work on that requires, like, a completely different creative mind becomes... Uh, left to the side and then it's harder to return to you get what i'm saying bro like okay bro like do you know how crazy this is having this conversation with you right now because i met you what 2015 i'm so bad with dates it was 2015 because when did you start at, at all that you know how I measure that? I was 24. Okay. <laughs> whatever year, whatever oh, you know, year that is, I'm 34. You're 30, so 10 years ago. Okay, so 20, 2014. 2014, so okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I met you 2015. Now, when you first started, did you get hired as a producer or were you a PA when you first started? When I first, first started? First started. I was an uh, intern. It's, so and so you, used to was... take, you did used to take lunch orders for stuff, right? Yeah. Cause see, I like every time like I be like trying to tell wholesome stories. I be like, yeah, man. And I remember when Pat started as a PA. But then I be like, wait, did he start as a PA? I be like, cause I remember you would take lunch orders and mm -hmm. then you know working all the way up to this. But this is the thing that just weirded me out about this whole conversation, right? Like listening to you talk now as this fully developed, functioning business executive, like you know what I'm saying, like the suits, like you know, but with a hip, you know, type of slang and vernacular. But does it ever, like, I remember Pat the creative, and I'm not saying that I don't hear that in that conversation, but what I'm saying is, like, niggas don't know, like, you play keys, nigga, like, you rap, like, you play drums, like, nigga, like, niggas don't know, like, this nigga really is really fucking talented Thank on some you. creative shit, so does it, and the reason why I'm saying this is because, I'll say this and then I'll give you the form what you want to say, So right, because, like, it took me so long to arrive at the morning cup of dough morning show, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, just with through everything, like, you know, through whatever I've gone through in my career, it's just like, I had to just start to make a decision. Like, you know what? I could be eyed at everything, you know what I'm saying? Or I could be really good at one thing. What do I want to try to be really good at? And so then it took me like six to eight months, bro, to even like, bro, even when you was here, at the uh, at the grand opening, remember when I was walking you around? And I was and you're like, well, don't. What's the plan? And I was just like, I don't know. Like, I think I want to read it out. Like, I don't know because I didn't even know what particularly I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to get back in the creative space. I, but I was kind of scared. So I was kind of like, well, maybe I'll just produce from behind the scenes. Maybe I'll look for new talent. Da, 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 da. Long story short, the driving force that brought me back to create, you know, to what we what we do on the morning cup of dough is the cook up which is the 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 musical component of it mm -hmm. which ironically is the thing that I started out with in the beginning I never wanted to be a comedian I never wanted to be an actor that was never I wanted to when you know what I'm saying when it all was in the beginning I was a drummer I wanted to rap I was a gospel rapper like that was my thing so for it to all come full circle and for me to create a show where it's like every day I get to do music it's just it's just one of those things where it's like now I feel like it all makes sense to me because I can do what I'm really passionate about creatively. So now the question that I have to ask to you, because I can clearly see you're killing it on the business. I know that. Like, this is just easy to see. But just as a as a fellow artist, like, do you ever feel like your creativity or your thing, like those other new, like that creator in you or the artist in you, do you ever feel like that starts to get starved a little bit? due to the business responsibilities of being the boss or you know the head of content or whatever the position is that you hold currently 
does the business side of it kind of like interrupt take away the from creative it? does it does it because we only get 20 like unfortunately we only get 24 hours in a day yeah so you only have so much bandwidth for sure that you can allocate to things so does it ever be like damn man because nigga i didn't been to your crib before and like you know what i'm saying way back when we shot king of the sixes and shit like so i know like how you live like in the creative sense so like is it still that or is it now more of just like more of the business part of it because that's kind of what gets required the more that we elevate in this game yeah i mean i think that's <clears throat> that's off rip i think that it's it's very important to be good at the business side of it um and I'm learning too, you know, because I think that one of the fun things about starting off, you know, you know, with with all deaf or just starting off, you know, creatively in anything, is it's kind of like a hundred percent creativity at right. that point. Mm -hmm. And then when things get marketable, you have to either, you know, have a manager, you know, fully do that, but then you run the risk as an artist of being uh, like cheated or like you know somebody like or jacked mm -hmm. because. You don't think the suits know that? If they have no creativity, their whole thing is business. Like, they want that. They right. they they see that every single time. You're you're in your own world. Like I'm an artist, but they're just you're on a, a rotation for them. They see every single artist, and they know that we're bad at the business side. So if they're just like, yeah, let me take care of it. That's how uh, generations of artists got fucked over. So I think that it's important to do a lot of the stuff yourself, and then that's just automatically going to take away from it. But I think that that's just a part of growing and getting big at, at, at your craft because it's like you you have to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that working for All Deaf was was really dope because it was creative creativity. And then, you know, when my ideas were proven to be good enough, they were just like, nah, you don't have to worry about this stuff. So I, I, I had kind of had like a team mm -hmm. to do all that stuff and I didn't have to worry about it. But then when I started my own businesses, it's like, you sit back and you're like, oh shit, if I don't do anything today, <laughs> ain't no like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's, the boss? <laughs> yeah, like that's that's it. So you kind of it's it, you. I feel like as you grow, you're getting you get in positions naturally mm. that you just have to work that part out, or or you're going to either get cheated or get nothing done. Mm. So I think that it's it's just something I'm I'm learning to to be better at. But you know when you when you start multiple businesses, naturally some of them are going to be at a standstill. Mm -hmm. And if you're constantly going over here, then it's it's hard to do the long term stuff. And some people are just really good at that stuff, you know, like right. just on a machine. But just that's just part of my growth right now is just kind of figure out like how do I do? It's just a discipline, you know what right. I mean? The structure just, of it all. Exactly. <clears throat> that, that's management. the thing. Yeah, I become unglued, like, if I don't have structure. Like, if I don't have structure, like, I'm just a mess. But, like, when I have structure, like, I can definitely, you know, do things, put my ducks in a row, and be way more productive. Let me ask you this. Of all the things that you currently do creatively, like, what, even if it's nothing that's to the world, like, what is it creatively that gives you the best, like, like the best feeling right now like is it you know just putting on your headphones and playing the keys for an hour is it maybe hopping in the booth and spitting some bars like i know you mm -hmm. can sing and shit like is it singing some shit is it play you play the guitars how many instruments do you play uh i pretty much just piano but you don't I mean, play piano? I, you don't play guitar i feel like I, I i play all that stuff but it's like i don't play enough to like play it right, you know? right, right, right. <laughs> but you can but you can strum a, a, a string on the yeah, guitar. Yeah, no, like a chord shapes chord and stuff, yeah. You play drums a little bit. Mm -hmm. You play keys a little bit. I make... went to school for keys, yeah. Right. But make... even that's one of the things that's like, you know, one of the things that was like prioritized low with all of the other stuff going on. So it's like, that's one of the things I wish I could do more. And I'm, that's what I'm training myself to figure out a way to do that. So let's talk about that. So so run me through your, your childhood. So I know that you know you're definitely into arts and stuff but what kind of child were you like you know run you know run me your childhood from like when you're born to 10 o'clock like talk, i mean to 10 years old like any siblings like just tell me what type of childhood you had <laughs> For the first 10 hours of his life 10, <laughs> <laughs> 10 years of your life so like run me like you know tell me what type of kid you were like t type of stuff you were into um well, I, I think that, you know, I was I was I was chill. I wasn't bad. Like I was the I'm the youngest of three, so I was always kinda like the one that like, you know, you kinda look at your siblings mess up and you're like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> if, they, if they if they got spanked for that, I won't do that. You know, that was my <laughs> mentality. Uh and you know, obviously like, you know, I fought with my brother and stuff, but we didn't we weren't like bad kids, you know. Okay. Um and creatively just to kinda And you were from out here in LA, right? Yeah. LA. Okay, gotcha. And just, you know, to, to fast forward creatively, I was just very 
curious. You know, I played the cello, you know, in third grade. I played the saxophone in sixth grade. Like, I was just, I was, I'm, I'm almost like jealous of how curious I was musically and creatively back then. Cause I was just like, try, 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 try. Like, you know, I was, I learned the harmonica. You know? <laughs> <For real? laughs> yeah. And it was just, it wasn't for a reason. You know, I, I went, I started playing piano with my friend Lonnie because we had a, a electronic music class and you had to have a year of piano before you did that. Mm hmm. Because uh, I went to a performing arts high school. Okay. So I learned piano. I was like, okay, this is dope. It makes sense because you kind of learn everything, whereas everybody stays on one part of it. And how staff. old were you when you're learning piano? Uh, this was like high school. Okay, okay, gotcha, okay, gotcha, okay, gotcha, okay, go ahead. Yeah, and right. then I went to school, and I went to school for music business because I thought that was more important, mm -hmm. but I minored in piano, so I had piano lessons. So, And then I went to the Musicians Institute for piano for a year. So I wasn't like amazing. Like I'm really bad at reading music. Mm -hmm. But um, I memorized and I, I learned improvisation early, so I would just make stuff every time I got on the piano. So I feel like back then it was like, okay, I'm gonna try producing. Okay, I'm gonna try rapping. Okay, now I'm in a. I was in a rock band for a little bit. You're in a whoa! I didn't even know <laughs> that you were in a rock band. Yeah, there was a. What'd you play? I didn't play anything. I was vocal. So there was nice. a. I was I was already rapping with my friends, and Battle of the Bands came to my high school. Okay. And they were like, like all the schools from that have like a band and we, uh, we won the one in our school and then we won the one in the district and we're like, oh shit. And then, uh, we, we won the Western mm -hmm. and then they, the finals was in Ireland. So at, at, uh, 18, I think I was 17 or 18, me and my friends spent two weeks in Ireland and there was a battle of the bands against people from all over the world. And we won that. You guys beat everybody? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, so we, I got this big ass plaque in my, uh, in my room. <laughs> Cool. So and then after that we we played for a little bit and then we were like all right bye <laughs> and, then this is over? Just, and then everybody just did, kind of did their own thing after that it was just like we just tried stuff and I feel like when you now that I'm like older and like I've experienced some success with my creative projects it's almost kind of harder to try stuff mm -hmm. you know and I'm trying to get out of that mind state because it's it's it becomes like important you know and then it's like and then it becomes like a thing and then you know it's it's just I don't know if I'm speaking for a bunch of people or just me, but it just it kind of becomes harder to try stuff because there's just there's just more pressure to be honest. That you know, there I wanted to actually you know circle back to that. Why do you think as adults we're like that? Because I heard somebody say that. I think I heard a motivational speaker say that. I, I would say their name, but I can't. But I can't remember, so I can't cite the source. But like even when we're like toddlers, right? Like when we're just little kids. Like, if we were to give up as quickly as adults give up on stuff, we never learn, like, how to walk, how to talk. Like, think about how much a kid falls down when they're trying to learn how to walk. But they just keep doing it because they just <laughs> figure that they're supposed to do it. And then everything else that they learn in the evolution, they just – and like you said, like, when you're younger, you're just it's a like – great analogy, by the way. Yeah, like, you don't say really just, <laughs> yeah. you know. But, you know, but like you said, though, it's like you were younger and you was like, fuck, uh, I'll try harmonica. Like, I'll try cello. But, like – now people, you know, yeah. maybe in your 30s or 40s, you might, I ain't doing that. Maybe they, right. you think you look too cool or maybe, what do you think it is that makes, that takes away that child in us from being open to doing new things like that? Because I, 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 I suffer from that too. Like, what do you think that that comes from? I don't, I'm not sure exactly where it comes from. Like specifically, I think that it's just a part of the brain that just develops because they even say like now please mind the the the, the dark like metaphor oh um, god here we go i don't mean i don't mean this in the, you know what i'm saying it's okay go ahead but they 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 did say um back in the in the southern times like during slavery okay. that slaves stopped running away at like 30 years old like that's when like if if uh, like if you stop running like if if you're a runaway slave by 30 years old if you uh if you stop running away you're pretty much you're on the plantation for life, Damn. and that yeah, That's and so it, and, and it, I don't know if it's something that just like develops inside of your brain that well no they, I think it's an it's even like, bigger le a, a bigger level to it because they say like different fish, if you put them in a certain like tank, they'll only grow to be as big as that true. tank is, but if you put them in a bigger tank, they'd be bigger. Right. So you only can be as big as your environment. I don't know if that related. Yeah, I, to what? That's part of it. I, like <laughs> <laughs> I was like, maybe I that know. has nothing to do with. No, that really is a thing, though. <laughs> There's a like, say you had a, a whatever type of fish, right? I get what you're and saying. And you put it in too. an environment, right? And it's only five foot big. It's only going to grow to those coordinates, right? But if it was ten feet, 
It could I don't think anybody that. was confused. <laughs> I ran it back. I spun the block on it. I don't <laughs> think anybody was confused. No, 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 you ain't got to pull my car. No, no, he was like, wait, what? Let me bring it back, though. Because, like, okay, so say, like, for instance, um, like, I... I came. To we need to roll another blunt. That's L- the problem. I came to LA at an early age. I came to LA when I was 20 years old, 21. Okay. So, and I and I've had a lot of like friends that are maybe uh, closer to 30 come, mm-hmm. and they just can't like can't stick it out. They wind up going back to the East Coast. Oh yeah, I've and seen I, a bunch of people go home. Be like, I'm gonna just go home and stack some if bread. If it was if it was them younger, they probably would stay because uh, uh like. I feel like when you're younger, you just feel like there's you just have more energy, maybe more drive. And it's just something about like like what you're saying. If if you're if you're able to you know t- take someone out of that environment and putting them into a big uh, a bigger environment like you know a bigger city. If you you know what I'm saying you never grew up in a city like that, then you're able to become you know break free of that mindset of yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying those like uh, uh, invisible shackles, mental shackles, right? If you will. So yeah. Right. Give me some transition music. Conclusion. Uh. Okay, well, the We're chat had one question. They wanted yeah. to know uh, Pat's musical influences oh, before please. we move on to please. actually making music. I was going to ask that regardless. Yeah, they want to know, so. Um, uh, probably. Who's on your playlist right now? Yeah, what do you listen to? Um, my, uh, my playlist is actually different than it's ever been because it's more like, like Afro and house and That's stuff like right. that. Just because I've been playing with the DDJs, my friend uh, started a, a DJ uh, stream called Mike's House. Oh, okay. That's and um, shout I've out been... to Mike's House. Is that yeah. the answer to his question for... from earlier? Like, what do you do to like for the creative release? Um, DJ. That that's actually more of one of the things I'm 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 trying right now. Nice. Okay. Like when back when it was like, oh cool, I'm trash at something again. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool because I'm less trash than yesterday. Well, it's like I didn't I didn't do it yesterday. Right. Okay. You know, and I feel like that's a worse stage right. for me because once I'm I feel like once I'm in, I'm kind of in. You know, right. because it kind of like takes a minute. Right. You know? But um. Yeah, that's been most of the 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 stuff in my playlist now, but it's never been a musical influence for me because I never listened to it before. Now I never really understood it before, but I feel like I'm I'm kind of starting to understand it. Oh, it's lit. Yeah, and, and it's a little, and I feel like the the stuff I'm listening to is a little bit better than the stuff that you think of when you're kind of mm-hmm. like when the stereotypical. You got DJ friends. Song, yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> and then you get the deep cuts. Yeah, yes, sir. Let, let me ask you this. What uh what type of music are you making these days? I know you're still making some music. You're, you're just you're you, and I know you. I want to think I know you. <laughs> um, what type of music are you making these days? Um, I kind of I'm going through uh, uh the Temple series. Uh, I I released an album called Water Temple in 2019. And can they uh, find it on all streaming platforms? Mm-hmm. Okay, check it's it out. It's under under Pat Cloud. Patrick Cloud, yeah. Okay. And um yeah, I'm I'm, I'm basically have a temple series going on right now um but now is this is there like a meaning behind temple series is like is it like a kind of like a time piece like we were even talking about with i Kendrick? think just all my all my friends and uh not friends all my <laughs> uh favorite like games growing up and tv shows and movies just had like a like a temple system like almost just like like levels you know okay. um and a lot of zelda yeah, mm-hmm. Zelda, Bruce Lee, mm-hmm. um, the, the Game of Death, where like each it kind of had like a series of of floors was like one of my favorite formats. So it's kind of like based off of those two things. Um, and uh, yeah, I have one that's coming out that's a little bit more spacey because it's called Celestial Temple. Um, talk to me about this. What's what? Talk to me about Celestial Temple. So um, it's basically kind of like it's it's hip hop, um, but just. It's kind of just in the style that I've always had. It's very just like laid back, not really turned up. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Um, but kind of like uh, just more like groovy. Like the uh, people have described it, described it in the genre of cloudy cloud rap or cloudy rap, which I didn't even know was a thing. It has. You've created your name. own shit. No, 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 no. It's, it's like a whole rap. different oh, thing. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's a whole different thing, but it was just like a coincidence. They'll be like, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. And I checked it out, and I was like, okay, I could kind of see that. So just very like very like chill vibey hip hop. Okay. Um, and yeah, besides nice. that, I'm just um, my my DJ friends are starting to like, you know, do more stuff in the Afro beats and uh, like even jungle beats type of stuff. And they they're starting nasty. to yeah, it's crazy. So like they've been sending me stuff like that. So and I'm, you're I'm, and you're still producing beats on your joint too. Yeah, trying okay. to do that's one of the things I'm trying to do more too. Okay.